on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. <clears throat> at least like we're halfway through the week, but we'll just take Friday off. <laughs> but alas, we're not. So welcome back to our streams. Hopefully you have found us yet again. Um, with a desire to mix up some cocktails with us. Uh, as you can see, you're probably confused because instead of seeing a cocktail, you see wine. And um, as I mentioned, my husband is going to be making the cocktail today. And unfortunately- You hate the cocktail. Well, hate's a strong word. I don't like using the word hate, you know that. I don't like using that word. Just um, like immensely. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have tried bourbon many times. I'm just not a fan. I'm, I'm not a fan of bourbon. Um, and, and and I'm not a fan of bourbon breath. So when he drinks bourbon, I just kind of keep a good distance. Um, because and, and it's funny because we were talking about this earlier. And I said, you know, it's not just me. Like, I know other women who, if they don't care for bourbon, they also don't like the smell of bourbon breath, which is like a thing. So yeah. you'll have to let me know. Like if you don't like bourbon, does the bourbon breath kind of set you uh? But um but I do understand that he likes it and I yes. think that's fine. And I will say I I've used <clears throat> bourbon in cooking. Like I mm -hmm. bourbon has a great flavor it's, and it it's somehow a sweeter. It's, a sweeter, it's a sweeter, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um and somehow like when it mixes with the other parts of the food, I'm fine with it. But in a drink and I've tried like if you like bourbon, so he's had mm -hmm countless different kinds of drinks out with bourbon and I've tried them and they might, well, <laughs> I will say usually I'll smell it and I'm like, mm, I know I'm not going to like it because I can just smell enough of it that I think this is, this isn't going to happen. You're a champ. You take, you I take, take a little sip. sip. We're triers that, in this family. Like we are triers. Yeah. And, yeah. And so it just kind of tastes like medicine to me. Like it tastes like something I got to like power, power down. So, it's really good um, yeah. So anyway, so on the night that he is fixing a cocktail that I don't care for, um, which most likely has bourbon in it, uh, I will be having wine because, you know, I don't want to be totally out of the fun. So I just opened up a bottle of wine that, so he had gone to get some wine. I love me some wine. Um, I like all kinds of wine, whites, reds, rosés. I don't like them too sweet. Um, and so one of my favorite, no, I've not had this kind. So we're going to be trying this, um, tonight. And actually my son, Matt's going to taste it with me. One of my favorite, Matt, what do I say? Varietal of wines, like is a Pinot Noir. I do like, is that favorite what I would grapes. say? Favorite yeah, grapes. Favorite, okay. Yeah, so yeah. Maddie took a wine class, um, in his last semester, senior year. And it was very informative. And it's funny because I took a wine class my senior year of high school. What? Like, I wasn't even drinking wine then. No, it was no, it no. wasn't you didn't taste it. It was about wine. So I I learned, not. It was it was um it wasn't a wine class. It was about it was a fr French class that talked about wines. I clarified. Oh. Um and literally like we learned all about the regions, but it all was all in France. But anyways, I digress. So I like Pinot Noirs, and one of the reasons I like them, and I like others, is because I think they just, they're so easy to pair either with foods, and they're also easy to drink because they're not too heavy. And so this one that um, Andy surprised me with is from Oregon, and it is from Domaine <clears throat> Lubijac, would be how I guess you say it. And it's a 2020 vintage Pinot Noir, so it's a great, great wine place around here called Total Wine, and, um, and they're great. Matt you can go in there and taste. ask questions, and so I kind of just go in there and say, what do you like? And Do you want to taste, too? Typically, it's great. I'll just take a sip of yours when you're done. Okay. Mm. So I'm going to be, Matt just having a sip, because he's going to, <laughs> he's going to indulge in some bourbon. So we're going to let you know how this is. Again, it's the... 2020 Pinot Noir from the Wilmette Valley, Domaine Lubijac. No, I'm serious. That's, that's what we were taught. We were taught in our wine class that <laughs> first drink of the day, you just kind of get in your mouth, you swish it around, and then the second drink is what you appreciate. So. I thought you were going to spit on me. No. Yeah, I was going to go. <laughs> oh, there's some definite, like, some stuff coming at me with this. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Is it like spice or pepper? I feel like it's pepper. Yeah, I think it might. I'm getting but like not, pepper. But not, but not like the pepper that's in... Um, yeah, not like not like black pepper. Yeah, like it's in... Um, what are those other bridles? Um, Shiraz and... 
It's one of those oh, other good. ones like it's really peppery. It's not. It's not it's spicy. That peppery. No, no. It's, it's but it, but it, you taste it. It's like yeah. it, there's like a. Mm -hmm. Um, That's good. But Pinot Noirs are nice because they're just not, um, they're, they're just later tasting. And, you know, we always talk about in our family how with cabs, they, you taste them on your tongue. They, no, I love cabs. And, yeah, and they're delicious and they're great with steaks and certain foods mm -hmm. especially. But they, they do, they linger. They do not like. It's fine by me. Yeah. <laughs> so this one is definitely like lighter. It tastes um, like Smells good. It's good. So one of my favorite Pinot Noirs is um, Naomi, and I love that. That is, oh my gosh! If you ever have a chance to try it, try Maybe Naomi so. um, Pinot Noir. It's delicious. So anyway, so now that I have my glass of wine, and we'll, we can put that, yeah, put, we'll that, just put that aside. Um, you were looking up some information about Manhattan's because you're making to Manhattan today, right? That is true. So I was looking up. Because I'm a history buff. Are you? Let me stand over here. <laughs> no, you like looking things up. So I was trying to figure out when the Manhattan came about, and because um, I knew it was one, it was an older drink, and I wasn't sure what was older, the old fashioned or the Manhattan. And I really don't know if I found the answer to that question. So, so anyway, <laughs> but, but I think they're around the same time. So I. I Saw this. So popular history suggests that the drink originated at the Manhattan Club in New York City in the mid 1870s. So that's not surprising. Where it was invented by, this is kind of cool, Lane Marshall for a banquet hosted by Jenny Jerome, which is Lady Randolph Churchill, mother of Winston. So Winston Churchill, in honor of presidential candidate Samuel J. Tilton. So that's hmm. now again whether that's true or not because there's some other there's some other um, stories about it. Um, I'm not sure, but um, pretty cool. I thought. Yeah, so. and that's like like over 150 years ago. So that's interesting. That is correct. 152 that, uh, to be that's, old, that's an old drink. That's a drink that has drink. stood the test of it's time. It's older for sure. than an old fashioned. It's older than old, yes, and that's in two weeks, right? That's the oh, one. Is that what I'm doing? I don't know. Is it that or the Negroni? I don't care. It doesn't, okay. We'll figure it out. But it's on my schedule. Oh, so we'll well whatever your schedule says, we'll do. And so. be good if I knew that. Um, so, yeah. So, you like bourbon. Do you want to talk about some of the, like, what bourbon you chose for tonight so, and why you chose yeah, that? Yeah. So, I, I honestly, I, so Manhattans can be made <clears throat> with either bourbon or rye. Um, I think rye is actually what, what the typical one was. But, I like bourbon, and quite frankly, I didn't have any rye, so I just um, I'm using Jefferson's Reserve, which is a good bourbon, um, not what was overly the rye priced. We had? we had a rye for a while, didn't we? Or no? um, we did. Um, was it that little one? It was. Okay. Was that Hudson? Yeah, yeah it was, it was Hudson, Hudson Valley or so, Hudson, right? So, okay. and which was great, and that that came from Rob. Mm -hmm. But so um, this is kind of a mid-priced bourbon. Um, I like it a lot. Um, I'm not a connoisseur of bourbon by any stretch of the imagination. I like a, I like a lot of bourbons. I like lower priced bourbons. You're a fan. You're just um, a, I'm a fan. You're yeah. a fan. I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. So, but like a Maker's Mark and a Woodford and um, Jim Beam Black. I love I love those. And Maker's um, Mark was the first bourbon that used to frequent our house. Yeah, right. In the big jug. Um, and why do you get the big jug? Did you want to explain? It's a, it's because it's a better deal. It's ironic. We live liters. in a little condo because we downsized years ago, and Ugh. and we don't have a lot of space. And anyone that lives in the city knows you, your space is a premium. Um, but because they're better deals, one point seven five as opposed to he he and insisting in these big things. So it is just it's just interesting. It's interesting. So, yes. one, one, one would so. be surprised at the the largeness of our containers. But anyway. So anyway, anywho, I like um, I like mid mid price bourbons also. And, and what's this one? Is this one? So this is Jefferson's. This no, but is, is it mid price? It's mid priced. It's mid priced. It's, okay. it's mid priced. I guess you'd call it. Um, and I have a Russell's in there right now that I haven't uh, tasted yet. So um, looking forward to that. that soon. Soon. And then um, you should taste it. On but I like streams. I like Blantons. I like Booker's and and. Um, so those are a little bit higher priced, and I would love to try Pappy Van Winkle one of these days, which is very high priced. So, but it's really hard to get too, so you can't really can't really find it much. So, 
Also, I know anyway. it's bourbon is well represented in the liquor cabinet. It is. Like it is. it's a. You think there? You think we all liked it for how many different? But for, two out of three of us do. This so. is true. So for and most and of have. them, most of them I have <laughs> little count. bottles. So, so I, I can try try little bottles. So can I make? You can. All right. So I am going to get some ice. By the way, while he's getting the ice, I gotta mention. So, for the longest time, we had the worst cocktail shaker. Well, actually, so we used to have. I think for a wedding, maybe we gotten just you know like in a set, like one of those sets that you know that you bought for twenty dollars. You got a bunch of different stuff. There was a cocktail shaker, and it was terrible. So when you use it, it would leak all over the place. It was it was terrible. So then we would use. Remember, I was talking about my. Um, my uh, Tupperware or Tupperware uh, um, measuring like yeah. for ounces that this I, one. yeah, yeah, the Tupperware thing. So my brain said, oh, we have some Tupperware salad shakers, like salad dressing shakers. And that's what we used for the longest time because it didn't drip. The thing is, is that it's Tupperware. So it's really hard to get it to close right because the seal and everything. But for years we've been using that, wouldn't you say? Yep. Yeah. So then um, you asked for Christmas for a new cocktail shaker. And I did some research, cause you know, it wouldn't be me without doing some research. And I settled on to try the OXO um, cocktail shaker. And it's great. I mean, so it was really between the, should it be double walled where you don't freeze your hands off or not. But all of the like experts in the field claim that you want it to freeze your hands yep. off because it really, it really gets that cold going. But the OXO does not drip. I mean, it's really, everything fits well. They even have a, a little measure. Yeah, you can use the cap. You could use that yeah. too, but I like mine. But it's very like well, it. like it's it's solid. I right. was really, well, and you've been pleased, right? And Yeah, but the issue with the like measuring cap is it like two ounces is like filled to the brim. Yeah, right. Whereas like two ounces in this is yeah, like, it still leans a little space. bit. Yeah, which is so nice. Yeah. It's a little okay. less messy. So, so a couple things. Um, Chill the glasses if you can. Um, Ooh, that's you that's didn't do. What, no, I did. Oh, wait, that's you did? I did? Yeah. Hey. yeah. Chill the glasses. So um, I don't yes. typically do that for one. Yeah, I was going to say. We hope we're not so fancy. <laughs> but I did, I did it for this one. We keep things And simple. then this is a pretty simple recipe. So it's really two to one. And if you want it less sweet, you add less um, sweet vermouth, obviously. Um, so, But we're going to keep it pretty traditional this time. Um, so usually two to one. And so, since Matt and I are going to have a proper one, we're going to we're going to use a good good amount of this this uh, this bourbon. So we're going to go for three three of those. All right. And so then we move over to sweet vermouth. And I had somebody tell me one time that the key to a good Manhattan is good vermouth. Um, this is a, I think, a decent one. Um, I, I'm not sure you pronounce this. Kochi. 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 So and it's 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 a Kochi? decent cookie. Wow. Does anybody cookie. know? It's okay, a decent. If you know, put the uh, it's a decent down, vermouth. So down below. So anyway, um, I guess could look it up too. So I'm gonna go three here. You see the rich color, and it's very sweet. And I did um, on Twitter. I posted the um, ingredients. Yep. I don't remember if I put the recipe. I think I might have put the recipe. No, I think on Twitter I put the ingredients. In the description, I put the recipe with the amounts, I believe. If not, I will make sure and adjust that. Yep. I think I did, um, but I will so, check. So then a couple um, dashes of bitters. And some of the bitters just went all over the countertop. And by the way, if you like stuff like this, please make sure and subscribe so you can be in the know of all of our future videos. And then a couple shots of orange bitters, not a lot, just a little bit. And what were the other bitters? What do you call them? Angostura? Angostura. Okay. Angostura bitters. So. All right. And then we'll shake this up and go from there. But before we do that, so I had, again, a good friend of ours named Rob who yeah, told me to... I do it on the yellow side. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. So you take a little lemon peel and you go around, you go around the lip of the glass. And I have 
No idea why. Because of the oils. So there, there's, um, I, the cook knows, there's essential oils in the peels of orange, lime, lemons, and those oils actually give a tremendous amount of flavor. Remember, we were making rice with one of the meals the other yep. day that had um, lemon, no, it wasn't rice. It was that, the bigger um, pearl couscous. Couscous, couscous. And we used lemon peel um, and we used Donut. I think the butter and some chicken broth. Anyway, you could really taste the lemon, but it's not sour, so it just gives the lemon flavor. The essence. So that gives the essence of lemon. Plus the smell. And we know, like, with wine, like, part of it's using your senses, you know? So you give the Manhattan a good shake. And it is getting so cold. Feel. I know. Feel. But that's what you want. No! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think we're good to we do that. Break the glasses. Did you uh, do the lemon to both of them? Yeah, he did. I did? No. Have, he, has, have you made him in Manhattan since he got a job? Yeah, yeah I think I did. Oh, you did, okay. I didn't chill the glasses though. Okay, this will be his special. So these are not your tr traditional Manhattan glasses, but these were gonna be. What are the traditional main hand glasses? The, um, what do you call it? The coupes. Oh, you just don't feel like using. Maybe yeah. you'll use the coupe for one of the other yeah. future tricks. Very much. You should use your mom's right. coupes for one of them. Yeah, I don't kid. And then you can use maybe the one that's a good idea. So that's the Manhattan, and then we'll top it off. You could put the lemon slice in there, but we're not going to do that. Or the lemon uh, peel in there. And one Luxardo cherry. The bottom. You don't need to use one for mine. No, I'm gonna do it. It's gonna look pretty. <laughs> He'll eat it. He'll so eat just for the uh, the people watching, I'm just gonna though, take this for uh, a second. I like the flavor of cherries, but I do not uh, actually eat cherries. <laughs> um, so usually uh, I do not get the fancy Luxardo cherries because I don't eat them, uh, and I am actually very surprised that you still did anyways. But I'm not going to complain. We give you the, um, what the oh cheap, yeah Wegmans. Cheap, so Wegmans cheap. has these. Uh, I think they're like boozy cherries. I forget what they call them. Yeah. Or tipsy cherries. That's what they they call them. Um, so I have these at Wegmans, which is a grocery store near us. Um, this is what I usually use. So Matt, hold this up. I know. Well, it's got a nice color. Yeah, it's a good good color. It's pretty dry. Want to taste it in? No, thank you. Come on. I've tasted it many times. You just want to get the face on film. All right. Yeah, yeah. come on. Yes. No, you guys do your little cheers. We'll continue to cheer to a job because cheers. it's always good to have a job. Mm. Can I smell it? It's good. Yep, smells like bourbon. I would be like, like if there was someone that needed to be around to see if if I'll someone had had bourbon, like maybe there was, I don't know, there was a reason that you'd have to know. I would be that person because I would smell it, I'm telling you, like a mile away. Do you, do you remember what the bottle went for? 60 maybe? Okay. Somewhere in that name, neck of the woods, 65. Yeah. Something so like yeah, that. definitely medium or mid yeah. like, and price. A lot of people would say that's probably low when it comes to bourbon. So, so. Matt, what's I guess, your... yeah, it does have a, quite a spectrum, so. What's your favorite yeah. bourbon? Do you have a favorite? Um, for Manhattans, uh, I mean, if I'm out, I'll usually do Bullet. Bullet Rye? Um, yeah, I'll do Bullet Rye for my Manhattans. That's pretty typical, out. I think. Um, but I mean, I, I, I kind of in a similar boat to him where I kind of like a lot of different bourbons. So like it could be Maker's Mark, it could be yeah. Bullet, it could be uh, Woodford Reserve. Uh, like I don't, I don't really mind, so. Well, I will say we can't, we can't make Manhattans without talking about an I, because I know this, uh, talking about your favorite, both of your favorite um, Manhattans you've ever had. So do you want to talk about that? Because that was, that was a pinch in the so, pocket. So we went to a, um, a very high-end um, steakhouse in the city called Barclay Prime, which is a really phenomenal place. And um, they, they are known for, they have a couple, I, I think like three or four, four or five, specialty drinks that they make and one of them is Manhattan it's the I think it's called the BP Manhattan 
and um, it is absolutely unbelievable. It's uh, it's also not cheap. Um, it's like a it's a thirty dollar drink, um, but it has um, and I've never heard of any of these. So um, it has Sagamore Spirit Signature Rye, a tobacco infused vermouth, and a cherry. And I'm sure it has a you know a couple other a couple other things. And but, I think there's like diamond dust. In oh my god, it's unbelievable! It's so good, <laughs> so good. But I like a lot of them. So. Yeah. So, and when you because you've had I know you've had a lot of different kinds of Manhattans. Is that the drink you've had where they um, put like a smoker over it and they like light something and then or is that a different drink? I think that's a different drink. That's I think that drink. was I think that was an old fashioned. Fashion. Okay. They did that too. It might have been something else too. I can't okay. remember, but but no, it wasn't. A, I don't think it was Manhattan. Yeah. Um, Are there any others that stick out to you? Are there any others that you've had out? Because I know that one has, but is there any um, others that you've had out that really stick out? It's like a really good Manhattan. Nothing too crazy. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say there's any like super notable standouts. I mean, the, the only standout one that we had actually talked about earlier was uh, down by the uh, Jersey Shore. There's a uh, bar that I've gone to a friend's for this uh, bingo night that they do, um, where they like play. Uh, it's like song bingo. It's you actually a lot of fun. You don't picture bingo and bourbon going together, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's like a bingo night they do with like you know throwback songs, and you have to like uh, you know know what the song is and then put it on the bingo board. That's not the important part. So the important part is the uh, the bartender um, when you order a Manhattan gives you um, a exceedingly nice portion um, to the point where it's basically two Manhattans. Um, uh, and, and, you know, it's just like a, it's a bullet Manhattan, but it's it's good and, uh, you know, having two servings uh, for the price of a single uh, uh, cocktail is pretty nice, so. They do that, they do that at the pub, you know. We oh, were you were saying that. that, yeah. So the pub. Um, Which is like a, like, it's just like an old time. Been around forever, state right house. across the bridge in yeah. New Jersey from Philly. Like, been there forever. Like, yeah. I remember as a little girl yeah. seeing that place on the it's way to like Philly. It's like a huge open room. But anyway, if you get a Manhattan there, they bring it in this kind of big man or big uh, martini glass. So it's a pretty, pretty large drink. And then we're sitting there, they, you know, they bring that and then they bring this other normal glass like this with ice cubes in it and it's also full of manhattan so it was basically at least two two drinks two and a half drinks so nice. I have a pour, so. so make sure and share with us down below of your favorite place to get manhattans please share what you like to put in manhattans please let us know if there's a little spin that you put because we would cert not we they would certainly love to try that sometimes. Yeah. So make sure um, to let us know what you like and, and your spin on it uh, for sure. And if there's anyone like me that just, I've tried and I just can't seem to get bourbon on my like side, um, you know, let us know about that too. But now next week, I'm excited because um, I am making a drink that I like. So I'm very excited about that. And I won't tell the story about it yet, but I will tell you it's an orange martini, which sounds, it's funny because it sounds very, ha uh -huh, it's an orange martini. It is delicious. It's good. And it has, um, it has a, quite a few ingredients to it. I will be posting it on Twitter. Make sure, as always, to follow me on Twitter. That's where you'll get the latest, um, you know, I will share pictures of things. I will share um, recipes or ingredient lists if you want to make along. I'll share, like I, I shared a poll this week. Um, for voting, that was actually voting on your favorite water, water ice, ice because it was right. the first day of spring. And in Philly, um, Rita's gives free water ice uh, on the first day of spring. So there's you never know what I'm going to post. So that, make sure and follow me on Twitter. But you always get the latest about streams. And um, I will just say that I like to call the orange martini my birthday martini. And I'll tell that story next week. But before next week, this weekend, um, my stream will not be on Saturday. It will be on Sunday as opposed to Saturday. And I have my first guest cook 
um, one of my friends, Tracy, she and I will be, um, she's picking the recipes and she likes to eat a lot of low carb. So that will be the theme of our stream on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. So again, if you like the content, be sure to subscribe, be sure to like the videos. Um, that helps me a lot. And also, I just appreciate comments and questions um, you know, down below. Um, and if you are hopping on the streams, please say hi, because we really like to see who who's joining yes, us. So, uh, but um, I hope you all have a good rest of the week. I hope your week was as by, because I know I'm feeling right now like the week is going to just kind of stumble and drag on by. So hopefully the week, will, the week will, will go by quick. And Cheers. until we see you on Sunday, have a great week. Cheers. Cheers.